Hello from the Dreamport Discord server. I'm Shadows Pub, bringing you Pimp Your Post Thursday. On the show today, we'll share posts, meet others, and have some fun. You can share your own post or someone else's you really like. To take part, drop the PYPT emoji into the show text channel. I'll add you to the list to take a turn sharing posts. When I call on you, add your post link to the text channel. Come on voice to tell us about it. Keep it brief, like a short commercial for the post. If you can't do voice, it's okay. You can share by text, but text and link must be ready to paste into the text channel when I call on you. You can have more than one turn, but you must use the emoji for each turn. Okay, let's get started. And um, the draws are running in the Fluency Fun channel. So if you haven't clicked on the emoji, you probably want to. <laughs> Okay, Blue, you're up. Hello, all, and thanks for hosting us. You're welcome. Um, Thank you for being here. Oh, you know, as long as the storms don't make my day a challenge. <clears throat> uh, I have planted some seeds indoors on my grow lights about oh, almost a month now. Well, actually, six weeks ago for tomatoes and three weeks ago for onions and peppers. And uh, I took the camera down and did a little update on how the garden's growing. How the uh, also have a whole uh, shelf full of herbs and whatnot. And so I dropped a little link to my post that is the garden update. The six tomatoes uh, that I'm growing are actually kind of an experiment. Usually I don't plant them until March 15th, but I have to wait usually 60 days to get any kind of early fruit. And so I'm trying to force it a little early. Um, I'll grow them really big indoors and then move them outside and hopefully get some fruit an extra. Actually, not 60, I have to wait uh, closer to three months. So this way I'm trying to force them about 60 days earlier than normal. So I get a little more harvest. We'll see if it even works. If not, I got my regular batch. I'm going to start on March 15th anyway. So anyway, that's the update to my garden growing this season. That's one way of experimenting. See if you can move the season along. Yeah, just, you know, cheat indoors and see if that helps. Yeah, I just I'm just trying to remember how much warmth and sunshine makes a difference on uh, ripening them. Oh, a lot. So that's why I'm gonna keep them indoors up until the last possible minute, until it really gets warm enough. Right. I normally move them outside around the last week of April, and so if, if they're much larger when I move them outside, that may help a lot. So your season starts a little bit earlier, anyways, than here. Yeah, yeah. I actually have close to 180 growing days, mm -hmm. which for some reason always shocks people when I mention it. I think yours is close to 125 or 130 up there. I don't generally consider it safe to be putting plants outdoors overnight until about the May 24th weekend. That's generally the time that people do their gardening. Yeah, so that's a full month later. Yeah. And and we go later into the fall. Like I can go all the way up to the first week of November outside. Although the way the climate is changing, it may come that, you know, they can start it sooner up here and they're just in habits. Oh, well, there you go. Who knows? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Blue. Thank you. And Cherry, you're up. Yeah, that's the color of your grow light, isn't it, um, blue? Or is that blue color you use to create your background? No, that is <clears throat> that is definitely the um, grow lights. There are three LEDs. There's a red, a uh, blue, and a green. I'm sorry, red, blue, and a white. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I forget to turn off the other colors. I usually just use the white when I'm filming. But sometimes I forget to turn the others off. Oops. That's maybe not a bad thing, though. It certainly catches attention. Yeah, it does. That's true. So, what do we got here? 
Cherry says, as a content creator and a human being, I work by faith. As a mother, I do everything for my son and my family. I work according to my strength and capabilities. I am healed in a way, but trying my best to take good care of myself for the sake of my family. Yet still, I try my best to help others in any possible way I can, in a positive and good way. Whatever others may see about me, I don't mind anymore. What matters is I feel happy to help without causing harm to others. I learn not to expect something from whatever I do because I only offer everything to God and I work because I know God will provide for me if what I accomplish pleases him. Uh, John 3.27, John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it is given to him from heaven. In this Bible verse, it's clear that whatever we received is not because of our strength and abilities. It's only because God blesses us according to his riches. Okay. <laughs> I see where that came from. Um, Cherry, it's probably not a good idea to just copy paste directly out of your um, your post. You kind of want to give people a little bit of a reason to go to the post and, and read it. Okay. Thank you, Cherry. And Treasure is next. Treasure, you with us? There she is. Okay. Unmute and come on and tell us about the, your post here. Everyone, good evening. How are you this evening? I'm fine. Good evening. Um, okay, this post is um, it's a prompt in the contest writing from um, I learners. It's a I learners prompt. So we are asked to write um, the kind of subject teacher we would love to be if we actually a teacher. So, and I wrote. How I would love to be an English teacher. Uh, well, everything's on the push. I don't let me go too deep in it. It's just, it's just a, it's a short post. So, and I wrote reasons why I would love to be an English teacher. All right. So that's it. Thank you. Okay. So you're not currently an English teacher, Treasure? Ma, what did you say? I said you're not currently an English teacher. No, I'm not an English teacher. I'm not even teaching. Mm -hmm. But you'd like to be one? Yes, I would love to be one. Are you, do you have plans to move in that direction? Um, because, um, not really, because in Nigeria, yeah, uh, they, don't, they don't pay teachers well. And teachers are like, the teaching job is like, I feel it's a more... It's like it's more job that one has to put more focus on, but they don't count it as a big deal. Yeah, so they don't pay teachers, and then teachers go through a lot of stress. Yeah, so wake up in the morning, take care of the kids, then you go to school, you go and teach, then you're coming back in the evening, you feel tired, all those kind, all those kind of things, and then at the end of the month, you are not being paid what you work for. So it's always stressful. So I don't think I will be going into that. I don't think I'll be going. Maybe if I eventually leave Nigeria to another country, maybe. But in Nigeria, yeah, teaching jobs are not always, and the pay is not actually so good. So they don't value their teachers. They don't pay teachers well, yes. Right. Okay, well, it's a it's certainly a dream to hold on to for the right time, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay, thank you, Treasure. You're welcome. And Seki, you are up. Well, this looks like quite a post. I've posted. 
<laughs> this is my post into the STEM community. Um, it's it's a very funny post. It's a very you you literally have a laugh and like you check all your perfume bottles to see what they are made of. Cause like apparently most of you have been spraying whale poop and whale vomit on your bodies, and like you feel it so fly. You feel it so. Oh my god, that smells so pretty. You smell like the sea. You smell like. Smell like aerial, but like yeah, just go read about it. Amber, amber grease is a very costly something though. It's a very nice, it's a very nice post if I do say so myself. So just go check it out. Yeah. <laughs> so this is based on fact, even though it's funny. Yes, it's based on facts. I, there are memes there. I don't know, trust is fact something. People eat it though. It's edible, edible food. Mwah. You're making you're making me happy that I'm unable to wear perfumes. Uh why is that? Oh, I have very <coughs> very sensitive skin. I can't trust putting too much stuff on it. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, you could try it. Maybe maybe it's even like it's adaptable uh, to you. That's, like, that's okay. Yes. I'll I'll pass on the poop. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, there, there are some things that are, you know one should just be thankful for. <laughs> I can't wear perfume Sorry. either. Amir, you might want to run that through ChatGPT and see if you can wear perfume, and if it comes in your size. I'm not quite sure what that size would be. Amy, bring some sanity back to us. Amy? Well, oh, does Amy have a... Ne ah, there she is. Okay, Amy. Come on and tell us about this. Hello, everyone. Here's a poem I wrote. Um, I think on Sunday, about we taking responsibility for our actions. Most of us always push the blame onto someone else when we do something. Some of us find it really hard to say we're sorry when we hurt people. So this poem here is just giving us um, that. Um, it's just a poem that encourages us to take um, responsibility for our actions. So you could just check it out and share your thoughts on what I wrote. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you, Amy. <coughs> That's definitely a picture that grabs the attention with the finger pointing out at you. Good job. Okay. Omok. Let's hope I got that one figured out. Maybe not. Omaka few, is that you? <laughs> there you go, you're unmuted. You got a link you oh. can drop? Um hi. Hi. Um good evening. It's actually um Omaf with the case silent. Okay, so if uh. you if you have a link to a post, drop that in the text channel. Okay, I correct now. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. Give you a moment there to get a link. Uh... Did you find uh, it? Yeah, I am. Mean, I mean, I mean, 
<laughs> you two are still going on about the whale poop. How you make it out there, Mark? Okay, I'm sorry, my network is shit. I'm trying to change it right now. Pardon me? Oh. I'm sorry, my network was freaking out, so I sent it just now. Have you got a link to a post to share with us, or would you like us to come back around to you? Oh, I, I see you typing there. There we go. Can't get here. I couldn't get any. Are you on a scooter? No, I'm outside. I'm sorry about the background noise. There was no like network in my house. Okay, tell us about your post. Okay, so it's literally like an intro post. I think it's my first post in high, and I'm really looking for this. Um, it talks about myself. I'm 16. I'm in Nigeria. I'm dark skin. Um. And yeah, I talk about my hobbies too. So I write, read, and draw. Can I also add sleep into this? <laughs> okay, like, yeah, I draw really well. And I also, like, write really well and stuff. Yeah. All right. So, wel welcome to Hive. How are you enjoying writing on Hive so far? It's actually very nice. Like, actually, very nice. Like, being a community, like, very, actually, um, genius. Very nice. Very nice, yeah. And I see you have a love of drawing, so you'll be sharing some of those drawings with us. In fact, you did share yeah. one with us. You guys want to see this drawing? You're going to need to go and have a look at the post. Yes. All right. Thank you, Amok. Good job. Oh, wow. Good job. Yeah, thank you. Okay, go ahead and mute now. Huh? Remute yourself. Okay, okay. Okay. Hey, Q. Okay, James, you're up. Okay. Volume okay? Volume's excellent. Okay. Um, I'm bringing this post in for a couple of different reasons. One is the current situation that we have been having on... Uh, artificial intelligence and people using them to depend on them versus people using them to assist versus et cetera, et cetera. So this post here, Treasury explains what um, she's been scammed before. Uh, most people uh, with Dreamport or from Nigeria know about this from her earlier writing. This happened a little while back. But she was explaining also that her husband just got scammed, and that was extremely recent. So that led, her article right there, led to um, somebody who has just started an account on Hive called Hive Defender. Um, and whatever AI unit this guy was using, I, I forgot the name of it. Um, it, it claims that this article was written with 97% AI, which is bullshit. It wasn't. Um, she spends a lot of time crafting her writing out. I've known her for a while uh, for various reasons, her and her husband. But um, So I'm bringing this back up because of the fact that this is becoming uh, mainstream and there's going to be other people on Hive that are being hit. Um, with false positives. And I, I suspect that his is not the only one that he has that's coming up false positive. So it's kind of like a, a warning for people to be very careful about using Grammarly and uh, any of the other um, apps for correcting so that their articles are not being rewritten. Um, 
out of their hand. I don't know how this piece of junk turned up that her writing was 97% AI. It, it wasn't, and he's falsely labeled her. We have a suspicion who it is that owns that. Um, and I'm not going to say because I don't have 100% proof. Uh, but this account was just started, and it's already off on a bad foot. I don't know if we could talk to Hive Watchers about it, or I don't know what all can be done with it. Uh, Miss Kitty and, and other people, um, like guilty parties and that, may become involved because they know a lot more than we do about all of this stuff going on. So, okay, I'm done. <laughs> so, so far at this point, this clown has no power to be doing anything except leaving really ugly looking comment on a post. It'd be that a is real, correct. It'd be a real good time to downvote the bugger off the platform. I just left a, I just left a, um, a comment on her post. You'll see it down at the bottom challenging this guy and telling him he's dead wrong about this. And that, um, I was warning him that, He's got to use more than one. Uh, this technology is 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 pretty new, and he's got to. You're gonna have to do this with like three or four different um, apps and balance the stuff out in order to come out and avoid false positives. Well, we already know that a lot of the plagiarism uh, detectors do not detect very accurately. And the AI detectors are even worse. So leaving a big nasty comment like that is the biggest problem. That I would call on everyone that comes across this app to downvote this guy. And I'm going to be the first one that goes over there and downvotes him for um, just not checking with stuff before he leaves that big ugly comment. Yeah. Yeah, one of one of the downsides is that people get to do pretty much like they uh, they like, but there are limits because the community has a, a way of saying things. Kitty girl, go ahead. Well, we had a discussion about this in the terminal this morning, and I learned something I did not know before. Okay, what's that? good at detecting grammar errors so you can correct them. Uh, there's also a feature called beautify that actually rephrases, rewords what you have said, and that will make it more susceptible to being flagged as a false positive by an AI detection program. So if you just use the basic app to correct your grammar and then you rewrite it you know, per the suggestions Grammarly has, you'll probably not run into trouble. But if you use that Beautify feature, uh, watch out. Yeah, because the Beautify feature is actually AI. So that makes I'd sense. Be, I'd be willing to bet that his bot comment was um, was AI generated too. <laughs> you may not be wrong on that. There is, um, there is a couple of the AI detectors that actually do have a fairly good reputation. But I really don't see it being a big issue at this point in time. Because from what I've, from what I've seen of what AI produces, it really looks spammy. It's poorly written material. It's, easy to, it's actually really easy to spot. And that's even after you get through playing around and saying, write it as a grade grade uh, five student who has reasonable proficiency in English. Even that doesn't bring you back anything because, again, there's no voice in there. The writer's voice is absent. Yeah, in the, in the terminal this morning, I, I believe that's where I read this, that uh, somebody had made a comment about, uh, uh, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, darn it. <laughs> Anybody that gets an AI-generated image and doesn't pay attention that the details are correct deserves to get spotted. <laughs> now, that's another thing. So is it is it legal 
sort of, I, I, I don't like that word, but is it legal to use AI generated art images um, provided that you source it? That you would be my, to, my thought. You don't need to source it. I have a Midjourney account. That Midjourney account gives me copyright of the images I generate. And I can use them commercially. I don't need to source anything. So what about the written content? Is it basically, it's, with guys like this, um, we don't, we're not going to have any control. If this guy goes berserk and doesn't, and just ignores everybody, because uh, one other thing, uh, real quick, Alessandra, is that I looked at his account and he doesn't have anything in that account. That's brand, that's a brand new account. It's only been up there for 23 days, I believe it was. And um, I don't know what, what. It's like maybe he's going to be like those guys that have minus 17 rep and he'll just keep going because there's no way to really stop him. Well, the nice part of it is, is you reach a level where the comments automatically get muted. So there's the objective. Downvote him to the point that his comments are muted. Okay. that That's actually really cool. I've seen our, one guy, I think, is minus 17. So... I'm going to put out a hypothesis that how far can we really push somebody <laughs> down? <laughs> how about minus 32? <laughs> Cause that's what was happening with, what was that other idiot that kept popping up with his wild accusations? Oh, there's, there's been several. <laughs> they have. And that's what was happening with him was that, you know, he would drop his automatic comments, but they would also be end up being automatically muted. And it was like, OK, who cares? I like Alessandra's writing right there. A uh, hypothesis. <laughs> <laughs> Chat GPT is indeed AI. So. Here's a little, here's a little um, trick, so to, so to speak, with ChatGPT. ChatGPT will not turn out really good content. That's just the nature of the beast. It's, it is not nuanced enough. But what it can really turn out is really good titles if you give it the right prompt. So, you know, it's not so much of using AI to do your work. Use it to assist. <clears throat> so I just remember the comment that was made, and it was it had to do with um, it. It wasn't so much that we could use it or not, as far as AI text content, but it would you could use it to get ideas. Like Miss Kitty puts in. Um, Here's some ideas if you are got writer's block and you can't think of what to write. So if someone uses one of these apps, then they could actually use it to give them some kind of ideas of different subjects or different stuff yep. to write. Not Absolutely. use that, not, not use that literally. <laughs> they could, you know, you could even do things like uh, have a list of, of topics, subtopics that you want to cover uh, under a subject and you could ask it to give you an outline and then work by the outline writing but you do your own writing so you can use it for good just don't try to be lazy with it because it's not going to work yes Zeta love they will they will probably this guy here will probably tag it with his nasty ugly comment if you're allowing the cool bot to paraphrase it Kitty girl, you're right on the, the antidotes being generated, and they're not bad, but I actually will uh, get them to generate an antidote and then create my own from it. Well, no, I mean, I had a story to tell when I said an, I had an anecdote. This is it. It's rather long, and I don't expect anyone to read it now, but you can scroll back and read it later, but uh, the TLDR <laughs> of it is is uh, somebody actually asked an AI-generated 
text program, you know, AIG. I would, I've, I volunteer to read it for the sole fact that the there's a lot of people. AI generator on... says it's not. Sorry about that. Um, I volunteer to read it for the sole fact that there's a lot of people that are on phone, on mobile, and they they have small screens. Okay, go ahead. Okay. All right. Funny thing. Something on the platform recently, someone on the platform recently asked an AI chat program if it was okay to use AI-generated text in a post. Here was the response from the AI generator itself. Prompt, is it morally correct to use AI-generated content to make money? The quote is, in recent years, artificial intelligence, known as AI, has increasingly been used to generate content for the purpose of entertainment, marketing, and other commercial activities. Unfortunately, using AI-generated content is both morally wrong and illegal. First, using an AI-generated content is morally wrong because it is a form of intellectual property theft. AI-generated content is created without the consent of the original creators, which means that the original creators are not given proper credit or compensation for their work. This puts the original creators at a disadvantage and unfairly rewards those who use AI-generated content. Second, using AI-generated content is illegal. AI-generated content is considered a form of copyright infringement, which is illegal in many countries. Unless the original creators explicitly give permission for their work to be used in this way, it is illegal to use AI-generated content for any purpose. Finally, Using AI-generated content is unethical because it takes away from the original creators. AI-generated content is often of lower quality than original content, and it can be seen as a way of taking away the hard work of original creators. This is both unfair and unethical. In conclusion, using AI-generated content is both morally wrong and illegal. And as often has been said, uh, AI does not always is not ad, always accurate. And guess what? Neither is that. It demonstrated a complete lack of understanding how it works. It doesn't draw content from other people. It draws inferences from the language. I think that might have been kind of like how the bot was, tr how the AI was trained from the original creators that um, set it up, I guess. Pretty much, Alessandra. I, I actually kind of wonder if maybe the person who said that they had put that prompt in had created their own answer. That would be interesting to find out. Yeah. What about the uh, AI generated artwork, Pravesh? It does the same thing. It it draws on the language to infer what it what it should generate. Unless you put a prompt in that says, um, "Create me a um, horse in the style of Picasso." If it says in the style of Picasso, then it will use Picasso's style and will draw on Picasso's work. But if you don't do that, then you're drawing on a much larger field and it's just bits and pieces that are coming in. Yeah, it's all good. It, this is all going to become, um, this is all really early in the state. It, it's kind of like it's in the infancy stages right now. And all of this stuff is going to have to be worked out. I love Alessandra's comment. So now AI thinks it's a, at an attorney of <laughs> <in> law. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry I kind of sidetracked everything, but no, I felt these, it needed to be brought up. These are important conversations, and we need to be keeping aware of how things develop. I know I saw a report the other day that the American um, Copyright Office 
has declared that there is no copyright on AI-generated art unless it has been substantially changed from what was generated. That's not what other countries have done, so it'll be interesting to see what eventually develops. Um, exactly. Sam says, I guess we'll have to wait to see what the outcome is from current lawsuits re AI images, but I reckon they will end up being appeal on appeal regardless of the initial outcome. I think where those artists are going to really have a good chance of gaining some traction is possibly outlawing the ability of the generator to actually use their styles. So if you, if you do a prompt and you name a, an artist, I can see where that sort of thing could be made illegal because you're, you're copyright infringement. You're directly trying to use their style. And I really do think that they, they need that protection in particular. <clears throat> you know, there are, and I did a post on it not long ago, there, there are something like, what is it? I've forgotten how many it was. Anyways, I did a series of posts on the various art styles and their recognized art styles that have been used for art, by artists over the centuries. And if you really want to do something with a particular style, go look those styles up. Quit trying to, to use the style of some named artist. Hands may suck in rendering for a while. <laughs> Hands, eyeballs, uh, what was it I was creating last week? Ah, the Tennessee Walker horse. One of them came up with, with uh, eight legs, which was interesting. Yeah, I have, I've I've been working with, uh, I don't know how that uh, mid-journey is. Uh, I heard they're the best. They're supposed to be top of the line, and they are paid. Uh, but I use uh, Night Cafe, and I, I had... I did a, a set of four horses, and three of those horses had three legs on the rear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them don't come up very well. You've got to just keep playing until until they, you know, produce a a reasonably good one. Okay, Seki, you want to say something there, Wandering Moon? I was just checking to see if my microphone was on so I could shut it off. I'm sorry. It's on. <laughs> Give me a second to shut it down. Okay, Seki. You're up. I don't see him typing. There he is. <laughs> Okay, since we're through with all those AI stuff, let's go back, back to stories and writing. And unconventional love. This was the scholar, anyhow, for the story of the month, the prompt of the month. Yeah, Rhea. Unconventional love. What should I say about this? Um, When a gamer finds love in a game, what comes of it? What do you think? Unconditional love that. in a game? That's it. No, unconventional, I guess. That, sorry, I said it wrong. Unconventional. It's meant to be like, it's not a love that I can expect or something. So I think that we're going to find that attitudes about what constitutes um, art that has been made is going to shift over time. I definitely agree that I made this or I draw this through this is definitely wrong. But there is a skill in developing the prompts to get those images. Iska, mute please. So I think we're going to end up changing our uh, shift of, of attitude over time. As I'll tell you, if I let you into the channel where I, I um, work on my art, the stuff that I create, uh, yeah, there's a lot of work goes into it.
That's okay, this guy. It happens to several of us. Okay, Amy, you're up. And let's see who got in for the first one. Sake, you won the first HBI today. And there's Amy. Okay. Um, this post is about me celebrating my little wins. Ever since I've been on Hive since August, this February was the only time I wrote every day of the month. And I was excited because at the start of the year, I set goals to be active here on Hive. But January wasn't really fair because I missed about two weeks. But February, I was able to write every day, though I had so many challenges. So I wrote about my challenges and how I was able to make do with my challenges and finally achieved the goal I set for February. So it's me just evaluating myself every month and I just wrote about it. So if you care to check, you're free to do that. Thank you. Nice going, Amy. You got your first wrote every month or every day of the month, which means that you probably did got four more of the road every day of the week, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, those become cumulative over time. I'm working on the um, road every day of the year one, so, so far I'm on track. Nice wandering, man. So who's going to get road every day in March? Everybody here, right? So that is what I Defender wrote back to me in response to my comment to him. <laughs> He's not the, uh, the brain trust he thinks he is. And really, uh, what's it to him? Other than leaving an ugly looking uh, comment, there's nothing Ex he can do about it. Exactly. Uh, Siki. It's not, I'm not after the AI stuff. I'm after uh, somebody who misuses the stuff and falsely okay. accuses us, the Hivians of stuff they're not doing. Yeah, and the part of the problem is if particularly if it's a newer uh, writer or somebody who has been writing, you know, diligently on their own, to suddenly get a, a comment like that, they're going to be fearful that they're going to start getting downvotes and stuff. And this guy's got no authority and, and has no ability to do anything except scare people. Exactly. He just started that account. Yeah. Why do I get the feeling it's a Walden move? It's really exactly like something he'd do. Is that the one under suspicion? James is not commenting. <laughs> wait, 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 what? I said, why do I get that that feels like a Walden move? Yeah, yeah, but that's not who... Um, those, those guys were discussing this in um, the private room in uh, in the terminal, and it's... They suspect who it is, but like I said, I'm not 100% sure. Um, they think that Cohen Stant is, Coin, Coin Stant or whatever it is. He's been around for a long time. They think oh, he's the one yeah. that has it. He was the one that was doing those weird comments that eventually ended up getting automatically muted. Well, he's one of them, yes. Yep. And so he started this up. Uh, 20, I believe I, like I said, I believe it was 23 days ago. He started this account and that's his response to my challenging him on his authority and what he's using to test it with. He shouldn't make false accusation because it puts, uh, dampers on the people involved. 
Yeah, let's just downvote the guy into automatic mute. Be done with him. So far, I'm showing no downvotes. I'm going to be the first one on this thing right now. Oh, did I not downvote that commercial? That one? Let's go back and do that. Oh, Pravish was beat me to it. Uh, no, actually, nobody's downvoted it at this point. Not according to Peak D. Oh, you know why? Because it won't let you downvote it. I wonder why. Wait a minute. Ah, you got to run up the percentage, then do it. It starts at 0%. Oh. Okay. There, I just did it. I've got it, 100%. Yeah. I did it wrong then. That's and I okay. can't go back and do it again, can I? Yeah, you can do it. You um, you do it once, it'll take the down vote away, and do it again, and it'll put it back on. Oh, okay. Thank you. There you go. Oh, he made a comment. He made a reply to Treasury when she wrote to him, good morning from this side. I wrote my content, sir. I just used my word tune to change my grammar. I didn't know that that was also an offense. This post was written by me. I just edited it with a word tune to cross out my error. I think I need more knowledge of this. And he wrote back after he wrote my, the comment to me. He wrote back, do not use word tune as it is an AI assistant. Wherever, whatever content it changes heavily will, it's supposed to be throw. He apparently illiterate. Throw a positive that even hive watchers would look at twice. Use Grammarly and stick to that one. Yeah. Do what you feel is right. The heck with him. Well, if we do enough downvotes on this, he'll get the idea that the community, although there's a lot of people just like Hive Watchers that make a lot of mistakes and go after the wrong people, um, but it's not right for um, them to just attack people. Uh, they think that they're smarter or wiser than the rest of the community when 300 people are upvoting it and you know at least 10 or 20 of them are are hand doing it they're not they're not on an auto vote um and and you're wiser than the the people that are actually um contributing material instead yeah. of reprimanding for stuff that's on a false accusation other than downvoting the clown probably best to ignore him don't even engage him in, in comments it makes him feel important Okay, uh, advice taken. Okay, Jerry, you're up. Okay. And Jerry says, unexpected things happen. Just see the positive side always. No matter how we want something, there will always be some disappointments. But no perfect things. Just enjoy the moment, learn a lesson from it, and move forward. Now, that's a good description. Well done, Cherry. Okay. Oop. I just managed to put the link for Amy's post under Cherry's. So we'll just correct that put the right one under it. There we go. And Abdulkudas, you are up. Doesn't everybody have eyes like that, uh, Alessandra? That looks like about three legs there somehow. Uh, good day, everyone. How are you? Uh, this is uh, a post uh, about on the IBNA prompt for the week. So, and uh, the post is all about friendship. So, 
we are told to ask about uh, to write about a friend we met, how we met him, and then probably what we gained from the paint up. So in the article, I wrote about my friend I met and they invested. So at my first year, so, and we were friends up to now. We are still friends till now. And then I wrote a part of why I would like to be a friend because uh, there's an idea that uh, show me your friend and I tell you who you are. Uh, thank you. Okay. Does anybody know if D-Learn is released yet or when the expected time for the release is? Ooh, Seki's on a roll. He won the three HBI. He's up to four. <laughs> well done, Abd Abdul Kudus. Yeah, I've not seen anything either. I guess I have to keep watching. My Genobot has been letting me down the last few days. That's not nice. Sam, you're up. Hey, Feathers. Hey, Sam. Okay. I don't know who's behind D-Learn um, Wandering Moon. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, that's fine. Um, so this is a new initiative by the Alliance, actually. Um, it's something that um, Brindan, Grindon is um, writing. It's a new um, Sunday paper um, for people who I think, I believe, it will be people who are in the Alliance who have just, I think she's like kind of gone around and picked up posts from people who are in the Alliance and put little spotlights of um, a really wide variety um, of, um, of content, which is really cool. Um, and I think it's, what's really nice about it is that it, um, instead of having to, you know, if you, when you're trying to support a community and support people's posts, then it have like contests and that going on all the time um, where, you know, you're taking part in a contest and then you also sort of doing and reading a couple of other entries, that sort of thing. Something like this is quite nice um, because um, you can just kind of go in there and read a nice selection from across the community. And I, I guess you'll probably be, um, you know, selecting different pieces each week. Um, and it's a new a new initiative um, between her and Witty uh, on the Alliance. And so I it was quite cool. Engine used to do posts like these. But I think it got too much for him to do, so this is probably a really good way to bring it back. Yeah, actually, I, I wouldn't know from before, but I mean, I just, uh, I kind of joined the Alliance Discord quite a while ago, and then um, when I was pretty new on Hive, and I had no idea what was going on, because, uh, what's it, it's the castle or something? Uh, or maybe it's all connected, isn't it? I'll probably <laughs> get told now by Kitty, that's something different. <laughs> I don't know. No. But, um, last I saw it was, well, I think, it was think, called the castle. I think the castle, the castle is, is, is the whole alliance thing. But yeah, I'm, I remember when I first was early on Hive, I, I'd gone into the castle and um, I followed somebody down the rabbit hole. And then I was like, oh, I don't know what all this is about. Because <laughs> I think it was just a bit over my head. Um, and yeah, all the names are really, really funny. Um, so I kind of didn't leave. But um, yeah. But now I've come back. Um, because now I kind of have more of an idea. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. Sure. And Wandering Moon, you're up. What is the controversy with the Alliance? Um, did you mean to share a con a comment, uh, Wandering Moon? That was a question pertaining to the last post about the alliance. I'm hearing I've I've read a lot of stuff, negative stuff about the alliance, and I just you know I haven't really looked into it, but I'm I've been hear hearing a lot more of it lately, and it's just like what's going on with that? Do I even want to get involved with them in any way? I have no idea why there would be controversy over the Alliance. It does more to uplift people than anything else. Oh, okay. Um, my link is um, 
this one here is a woman is building things, building buildings with her daughter, teaching her architecture in a way, I guess, using um, household things like, uh, I'm not sure I completely understood the whole thing, but it sounds like she's using um, old food packaging, like spaghetti boxes and pasta boxes and stuff like that. Hamburger helper stuff. I don't know. That's what I thought, but I wasn't, didn't really make it overly clear. So, but the whole project was really cool done, done really well. Okay. Um, do me a favor next time you share a link. Please don't do it from a, a comment. Then I have yeah, to... I, I apologize about that. It's just I was typing the comment and you told me it was my turn. So I kind of like did it real quick. <laughs> I think I got the original back to the original uh, link. Yeah, I, I have no idea why anybody would have issues with the, the alliance. If it is, it's probably petty, so I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, Amy, you're up. Amy? I saw her type briefly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. All right. This post is um, something that happened to me last week. I, in my country, we've been having issues with cash, and I was under the weather. It was really hard for me to get drugs because of the issue on ground. My um, bank app wasn't even working, and I was close to dying. For three days, I was at home with no way out. And then... Oh, did we lose you? Uh-oh, her network money cut out on her at the wrong time. <laughs> it happens one day. Good friends, good people. Can you hear me? Yeah, you you cut out for about a, a minute. Oh, sorry. I guess that was my network. Yeah. Okay, no so just to round off here, I just reflected on the good deed my friend did, and I just realized that we need people around us. And for us to have good people around us, we also need to be good people to others. I can just say probably because I've shown kindness to her at one point in time, and that was why it was easy for her to also reciprocate. So just go read and see what are the things we need to do to keep those people who we, sh we think we care about what do we do to to show them that we truly care about them just it's just me sharing my thoughts and everything that happened so you can check it out thank you okay thank you so james i saw your comment about that's an ai generated image if you take a look at the source it says it's from pexels so unless it was ai generated and uploaded to pexels it's not Some of those images can be really well done. Oh, well, geez, you'd never stir the pot. And Iska, you're up. And I haven't been thinking about writing targets by the number of words, but by the number of posts. Yesterday, Stuart made me realize I could. I don't know if I will do it. But I think it's a good way to set writing goals and strive to hit them. You should also check out his post to see how much he accomplished last month. I will write 500 words and I will write 500 more. So last I heard, Alessandra, he's writing a book, is he not? I think Stuart is working on writing a book. Oh, yes. Which 
tracking yourself novel. by words is the perfect way to go, but it also doesn't hurt to know how many words you've written over the course of a month. And what are some basic um, down and dirty ways of estimating words? Um, like, if, like if you were handwriting it in a notebook versus if you had it, if you were working in a Word doc. Or can the Word doc tell you how many words? A Word doc will usually tell you. Um, Scrivener tells me how many. Uh, Obsidian will tell you how many words are in a note. And I noticed the other day that there's also a plugin you can get for Obsidian that um, will allow you to highlight a passage and find out how many words are in it. Oh, oh yeah, because don't I, you hate it when... Oh, go ahead. Uh, sorry, Alessandra. I was just going to say, this is uh, Ken here. Uh, for the for the um, the handwriting one, you can probably take a picture with most phones, and, you know, phones now can do the OCR stuff, you know, Android and iPhone, and then you could just say, okay, well, that page, at least you would have an average, right? Yeah. Yeah, that, that would be one way, and then, you you know, you're just like, oh, I wrote 500 words on this page. I'm just making that up, and then you could say, oh, I've written 10 pages. Well, great, then I have 5,000 words. Yeah, that works, too. There are hundreds of community plugins available for Obsidian Greybird, Greybeard, Greybird. <laughs> Greybird's nice too. I just haven't met him. Yeah. Thank you, Ken. Well, I like hanging out here and, and listening. Um, it's it's a nice place to be. Thank Even you. Even if I'm not writing at all, hardly. <laughs> well, I'm writing different stuff. But, but I enjoy listening to all of you write, and I, I read your essays, and they bring joy to my heart. So, uh, yeah, good job, everyone. Keep keep at it. So what do you mean when you say you write different stuff? Um, well, like, so at the moment, um, all of my my writing is, is, is probably centered around, like, uh, coding stuff. Um, I'm... Um, you know, in the, in the job search right now. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I, I, I make some notes about things. Um, and, uh, and actually I probably do write some journal entries every so often, but those are just private for me, you know? Um, so uh, just the thought you might be curious to know, there is actually coding communities on hive and there's STEM communities on hive. Ah. Yeah, and Greybeard, you, it's you, you have you find. Greybeard, you're you're exactly up uh, my my alley. I'm I'm also approaching things more from the quality engineer side. So, testing things with testing the React code or uh, testing the 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 well, writing Python to occasionally to also test things. So anyway, yeah, don't <laughs> use AI. <laughs> Okay, Jessica, you're up. There she is. Come on and tell us about this. Okay. Hello, day everyone. Can everyone hear me? I can hear you. Okay. So... I was kind of confused. I it's been a long time. I've been yes. I I wasn't sure where to unmute myself, but I'm glad I finally did. So this link is um my entry to the Africans um weekly live performance. Um, I actually had a different song in mind to do the day I presented the song, but I choose to present the song Great Nation and I was inspired to do that because of the happenings in my country currently. So recently we had a presidential election and currently the the result has been announced. The tension has also reduced. However, people are not celebrating. People are not celebrating because they wished for someone else, a different candidate and a lot of people are saying that the election was rigged. So I 
in this post, I mentioned that regardless, because at that time, the result was not announced. So I mentioned in the video that regardless of who becomes our next president, all we just want is a better Nigeria and we want peace in the country. However, I also mentioned that if I have the opportunity, I wouldn't mind leaving my country to somewhere else to find my own greener pastures. So I just hope you guys just check out the video and the post and what's important to the video. Thank you. Nice job. Thank you, Jessica. And Jessica, congratulations. You won the five HBI. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Good job. Thank you. And Abdul Kudas, you are up. I uh, haven't seen him in today. Um, what was Amy's question there? Okay, um, so What's this is another post I made, I think, um, four days ago. And uh, the reason for making this post is, like, I was a little bit uh, in for some days. So I think more reason, that's why I was unable to attend uh, the QIPT last week. So I was ill and not feeling well. So immediately I recovered, so I just had to make some rant and talks about the um advantage of having good health and we don't value it so we don't value it because it's just something we get for free like the air we breathe in we just think it's something natural so but all these things when we lack them that's when we know the true value of uh those uh, natural resources that god has blessed us with thank you all right thank you abdul Kudus. And Amy, you are up. There we go. Okay. Yeah, this is a post, um, a prompt from the Inqua community. We're asked to write a non I'm sorry, a fictional story about any TV reality show. So I came up with a story about the Badmos family, whereby the spark in their marriage had died simply because the wife wasn't doing the little things that she used to do when they got married initially. And then I don't want to go further into the story anyways, but he went to his friend's place and he saw his friend watching this TV reality show. And from that TV reality show, something changed about his marriage. So just go check it out. What changed and how was he able to change his wife? You can do that by checking it out yourself. Thank you. Good job, Amy. Thank you. That's a pretty badass picture. I assume that's mom that you've got the picture of. And Seki, you are up. <laughs> Profesh says you can change your wife for the TV show? Damn. This is my entry for the Inquil, um, Inquil prompts, yeah, the reality TV show, and also for the Dream World of the Week. Yeah, this story is a lot. It's about, what is it about, what is it about? Yeah, just about elections, how... How I don't I don't know I don't know anymore. I like I I was thinking of how to how to say it, but I don't know. So like you read and come back and think how it's it. But like it's just it's a mixture of two prompts, the dream world of the week and the inco prompts. So yeah, I try to use all the dream world of the week prompts so far. So it's a very interesting story so if I just listen myself. Thanks. So when I was curating yesterday, this was one of the ones that I read. And I will tell you, this yeah. guys, there's some interesting... 
<laughs> There's some interesting twists and turns in this story, so go and have a read. All right, Wandering Moon, you are up. Okay. Tell us about this. I had to double check. I made sure I, I had to double check and make sure I got the link instead of a comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is basically um comparing or attempting to compare uh physical land assets to cryptocurrency, and which one would be be better or which one a person would think would be better. It's an interesting read. I'll bet. Especially in a bear market. Should make for an interesting comparison. Thank you, Wandering Moon. And Pravesh, you are up. Hi, hi, Shadows, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, this is uh, from a post. Uh, this is my latest episode in the series, Incredible India, which I'm doing since uh, last year. This is uh, episode number 16. It's called Radharani Temple, but there are actually two temples in this. This one is the main one. Uh, this temple is dedicated to uh, Goddess Radha, which is a, a wife of, um, you might have heard, Lord Krishna in Hinduism. Hinduism. So this is very, like, uh, the place is very beautiful, colorful. They celebrate uh, festivals um, throughout the year. And I tried to, like, uh, I went there a couple of weeks ago and then showed, um, took uh, some pictures and tried to show what is it, is it like to be there. Uh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Pravesh. And as Thank always, you. these posts that Pravesh has done has got some amazing pictures in that you want to check out. Thank you so much. Thanks. The end. <laughs> <laughs> And Jessica, you are up. Hello. Hello. Okay. So, this is a you're cutting out a little bit. One was about. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? Give it a try. Okay. So this um post was about the I it, my response to the Inkwell community non-fiction. I choose the entertainment worry. So I wrote a story about it time in my life when I had so much worry about something, but in the end, it never came, it never happened. So I I just wrote that story and I would love everyone to go check it out. And also leave a comment, I appreciate it. Okay, thank you, Jessica. Your network's picking on you, but I think we got the gist of it. And don't forget to go check out the story. Out the story. How often do we do anticipatory worrying? We worry about what it's what's going to happen when we get there, or what's going to happen when this happens. Nine times out of ten, we find out that everything we worried about doesn't happen. <laughs> Would you mute, please, Jessica? Okay, Amy, you're up.
All right. This is an interesting follow-on from the worry post. Go for it, Amy. Okay. Um, this was last week prompt from the Inkwell community, but this time it's the non-fiction, non-fictional story. So we're asked to write about the word that mark our life. The word that mark my life is face your fears. I, for one, I'm always scared at overwhelming situations. I, I try to run away from things that scare me. So I wrote about something that happened when I was trying to learn how to sew. My boss, I, I was always scared of this difficult styles, probably sleeve or the court itself. So my boss noticed whenever she, she gives me work to make clothes like that, I would always run away. I would sometimes I would just act like I was sick. And then she started to tell me to always face my fears. She knows I have a lot of potentials in me, but if I'm ready to face my fears, I'll be great. So I wrote about it and how that word helped me in life, how I was able to have overcome so many situations with just remembering that phrase whenever I come in contact with situations that scares me. So you could just go read it out. It could also be of help to you or a source of inspiration. Thank you. So Amy, could you name something that you found important that you were able to do because you faced your fears? Hmm, a lot of things. Okay. Firstly, let me just say I was able to, I'm not a bad at designer because I was able to face my fears. Yes. That There's no style. I, 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 it is. And even here on Hive, when I wanted to join Hive, honestly, I love to write. I have a diary where I write my whatever happens to me and all. But when a friend introduced Hive to me, I was like, ha, huh, will I be able to do that? I'm not a professional writer. I can't do that and all of that. She was like, just do something. Since it's something you love, just go ahead. And I, then I remember that word, face your fears. The worst is you're not taking the shot on it at all. You just start to regret. I should have just given it a try. Even if it works out, fine. If it doesn't, at least you did something. So here I am today enjoying Hive, even though I'm not yet a professional writer. But yes, I think I'm improving every day. So it has really helped me a lot. Thank you. So let's see if we've got this one figured out right. You faced your fears. You joined Hive. And be but you were fearful of it because you're not a professional writer. But you're getting paid to write. So I get news for you. You're a professional writer. Are you still going to yeah. develop, are you still going to develop <laughs> some more as a writer? Yep. That's why you keep yeah. on writing. There are some times when I write things, I'm like, ah, uh -uh, Amy, you know that I did this, you know, like uh -uh, I'm surprised because I think I get better every day. Aside that, I was able to hit the big contrast because I was able to face my fears. I don't know, I wrote about something one other time like that. I pimped it, whereby a client from a very far place came to make dresses, more badass dress like that. I was scared at first, like, ah, will I be able to make this dress? Because she was giving me this money that if you spoil my clothes, I would deal with you. She brought her friends, like, ah, she would deal with me. I was so scared. I wanted to reject it because I was scared. I don't want problems. But then I remember at first your fear, and I was like, bring it on. And I did it. She loved it. She brought her friends, her families. And now, in fact, I've been making money through her because she has introduced me to a lot of clients. So it's really good to face your fears, whatever it is. Good for you. Well done. <coughs> Thank, Thank you, Amy. And Treasure, you're up. Exactly, Wandering Moon. The worst you can get is a no. Okay, Treasure, come tell us about this. Okay, good evening again. <laughs> so, the, <laughs> so this first is actually um, like a, um, a prompt from an inquiry, non-fiction prompt. So, it's I think the prompt was like anticipating worry. Yes. So I wrote a post about. Um, the time I was pregnant with my daughter, unknown. Okay, this is how it went. Okay, I don't want. To, I don't want to dive into everything. Like I felt pregnant after the wedding, and then I was expecting 
a girl, but after so many ultra scans and the gender wasn't actually showing, I was scared. I was worried. I didn't want I didn't want a boy again. I didn't want to give birth to a boy again. So uh, just check out the post. It's kind of funny actually, because at the end of the day I didn't give birth to a boy. <laughs> So that is it. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you, Treasure. Um, Amy, you're up next. Does that mean that you still want this one too? Okay. Tell us okay. About it. Yeah. This one is a picture prompt from the free writer community. I wrote a poem about it. It's just about you seeing the picture and write whatever comes to your mind. So when I saw this picture, I just thought of the life of a nomad, one who doesn't settle at a particular place, who moves from places to places. And that means that you do need to be attached to people for you to be able to leave um, a place and um, at intervals, you don't need to be attached too much with things around you, be it your possessions or your loved ones. I also thought about it in this way. For you to be able to do that, you also need to leave your comfort zone. So I just wrote about it, a poem. It's a poem that just teaches us to be adventurous, to leave our comfort zone, and not to be too attached to people because sometimes it makes us stagnant in life because probably you have a contract, you need to leave where you're living. You start thinking, ah. Oh, did we lose you? I think we lost Amy on the network. Amy's network reminds me of Twitter Spaces for me. Well, we got um, you can go through it. Thank and you. Back. There we go. Thank you, Amy. All right. Jerry, you're up. James, I suspect we're going to see him dropping comments on a lot of people's posts. Yeah, he's he has... Um... That's a different account. So there's three of their three of his accounts that I have pulled up right now that are giving each other money, um, giving them delegations and stuff. So I'm suspecting, and they're all relatively new. I'm researching each one of them right now. Oh well, hive um, hive watchers might be interested in that little roundabout. Yeah, you got that right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try um, either I can or or Miss Kitty can, we'll try to talk to uh, Guilty and see if he could get some insight for us. Yeah. Yeah, if that's the bottom line is, is that they're delegating to each other. Eco instances scam and hive? Um, I think you need, need to drop the E off of their wandering moon. Yeah, it's Cohen Stan. Yeah. Jerry, tell us about this post. Yes, hello. Good evening. Uh, you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Hello. Okay. Um, good morning or good evening to everyone. So, this post, um, I joined a contest um, in Tagalog Trail. Okay. Filipino language. It's very controversial, uh, controversial for me uh, because of my sense, the Xander. Okay, so dignity over fame. So we need to choose between dignity over fame, and I choose dignity. Why? Because dignity is my crowning glory. Dignity for me is my self respect, my values, protecting my principles without hurting anyone in words and in action, to be polite, humble, and genuine, kind, and helpful. And I will risk my life for myself and to anybody, especially to my family 
and most of all to my son uh, to protect um, his dignity or other's dignity in a calm, humble, and right way. Because I believe that going to the level of the standard of the people who don't value um, other, other people's culture, um, principles, and beliefs, I think they have problems in their soul. Okay. I hear Just you hear me? Yes, Anne. Keep it, and, keep it, keep it um, brief. Keep it brief, oh, yeah? Keep it brief. Oh, yes. Okay. And then um, the dignity. I also um, taught it to my son. I always um, saying to him that um, be calm in uh, every time there is something, someone, or some circumstances that um, he faces, um, that he become humiliated or discriminated. Never go down to their uh, standard. Be calm. Be kind to them. Uh, be and pray for them. And never uh, choose to respect others because whatever we do, whatever we say, um, whatever Jerry, we Jerry, yes. The, yes? Long, the longer your description, the less reason there is for people to go read the post. Okay. Okay. Well, um, may I ask a question? Pardon? May I? Yes, yeah. may I ask you a question? Sure. Yes. Um, it is about my son, uh, Zizander, right? Um, what actually happened? Um, it's a question about hype also um what are the what are the uh rules and uh what um how can i come to that rules and about the things about the communities right is there really discrimination of using um some kind like the pop and other cultures um other cult cultures languages on hive is there any policy that not allowing anybody even if you're not um if you're not respecting the culture of others, you just have to do a a harsh in a harsh way to stop even for a ch child, though we are in a free free to post anything on hive. But I think um I must know if there is a policy at least to protect the um rights of everyone there on hive. It it's uh it's also connected on dignity that that what I'm talking here. Thank you, mom. So you asked me if you could ask a question, but I haven't heard the question. Oh, the question is that is there any policy about that? Um, about what? Uh, um, about the people who doing um um saying harsh word or that what what happened to my son Zander? I'm not angry or anything. I just want to clear um, sides because I'm inviting people on Hive and then how can I explain um, after hearing um, actually I invited some few no? and they said uh, I don't want to mention any names but um, is there any policy regarding the people who's doing hard, uh, saying harsh words against others especially to um, minors, let's say, or students like that. That's uh, the only question I want to know. If there is a policy um, about uh, people uh, doing that to others or not so, respecting cultures of others, yes. That's, only, that's the only question I want to know. So this is a blockchain. Why, exact, yeah. why exactly would there be a policy on anything? Oh, yes, that's it. But, yes... <laughs> That's true, but is it not good that even it's black that the that the harmony between um the interaction that we all we all are always promoting about engaging being better to another but I'm not saying that everybody's like that just that I'm asking like if there is a policy regarding that because I, others may be discouraged. Uh, just, just like that. And I'm going to ask again. It's a blockchain. Yes. Why would there be a policy? And who would enforce I, a policy? Yes. There's a policy because there's on that community where my son, there's a policy like that. That, that this, you should not do that. You should not enter that. So it's policy so there, or rules. Hold, or on, hold on. Hold on. There's a difference 
yeah. between a community establishing rules, which is their okay. right to establish, and a policy on a blockchain. So no, I am if asking. you've got if you've got a problem with the community, you have to take it up with that community. So that's why I'm asking. Is there if there is? That, so I'm just uh, wanted to know the answer so I can answer others also that I am inviting into the hive because I don't know how to answer that. So I also asked, and I just that's why I said if so I can ask, the answer, I can ask. The answer is that no. On a blockchain, no there are there are no overall policies for the simple fact they cannot be enforced, except through the oh. will of the community. And when it comes to an individual community, you've got oh, to yes. take any issues up with that community. It's their rules to establish. Um, okay, so so you mean um in uh, in the blockchain um there is um we we cannot um report any any um. Not good things uh, happening in Hive. Is that what you mean, Ma? I never said anything about reporting anything on the blockchain. Yeah, that's what I'm. Anything, anything. That's why I'm asking because I don't know. Uh, so I just want to know um, that that simple thing. So if your answer is there's no policy regarding that, and that's okay. At least now I know. Thank you very much. Okay, Amy, you're up. Very correct, Pravesh. Just follow community rules. If you don't like someone's community, don't post in that community. Okay, Amy. <laughs> oh, you must have finished reading the course because I actually shot one. This is a free writer community too. It's um, a challenge for 240 characters or less. I wasn't able to get up to 240 characters. I did 237, but then the prompt is about sound. I wrote about a lady who had a sound of a gunshot at midnight and she was, she was terrified. And then she had a knock on the door. So someone else, check it out. Who was that? All Just right. a short story. Thank you. Jerry, mute, please. Okay. Okay, so you did a zap fix. That was an interesting way to do it. You did the short, and then you figured out a, an image with it. Good job. Thank you, Amy. Anybody else have anything they'd like to share? Okay, go for it, Pravesh. Hi, sorry. Okay, so uh, this is a new community which has been started by Sign. Uh, this is a uh, Hinduism community. Uh, I'm surprised that there was no such community before. So yeah, I wanted to share this. If you want to like post anything related to Hinduism or something like that, you can do it here. Yeah. Just came into my mind when we were discussing about communities. Okay, so how do you pronounce that title of that book? I've seen it around. And tell us what the book oh, is. Bhagavad Gita. Okay, this is uh, Bhagavad Gita. It is uh, part of uh, a bigger book, which is a sub, uh, there is a sub chapter. This is a chapter in a bigger book, which is called Mahabharata. One of the two epics, one of the two epics we have. First is Mahabharata and the second one is Ramayana. Ramayana is much older, and then Mahabharata is when uh, two uh, uh, families like had a war between them, and then uh, one of the side has uh, five brothers, and the other one had hundred uh, or some hundred brothers, and then uh, this on the cover you see this uh, the divine figure is uh, Lord Krishna. Uh, he he then. Uh, guides those five brothers to win the uh, fight against those hundred uh, evil 
uh, brothers with uh, their uh, cousins effectively and then he uh, a, a time comes in this uh, epic when uh, this uh, this guy arjuna he he refuses to fight he says that uh, these are my brothers cousins how can i fight and <laughs> okay uh, <laughs> <laughs> So time comes when he he backs off like uh, I'm not gonna fight. Everything's going to be destroyed and and things like that. Then uh, this Lord Krishna, he gives lesson. He uh, portrays himself as the God and then he gives lessons uh, to him. And then these lessons are in this book Bhagavad Gita. Like they have conversation. like all type of conversation what is spirit spirit what is body what are your uh, dharmas like what you have to do when these and that everything so he explains in this book it's kind of like a hindu book of wisdom yeah huh. like one of the most famous books right i've seen the title around but i'd never really looked further yeah but it it that. is like sub sub uh, chapter it is just a chapter in this very uh, grand epic mahabharat which is like one of the biggest books ever written that one is more interesting hmm. but this is yes so have yeah, you read is, have you read the grand epic of of course not <laughs> <laughs> like I, is is uh, that like is that like asking a christian if they've written the, have read the bible <laughs> bible is just nothing like it is uh, so so voluminous you can't read it but we have seen like uh, in uh, movies and in folk tales and in all the stories our grandmas used to like everyone's grandma used to tell the, these stories and this is so in, uh, influential in our times like everyone's know them right. just by like being around But yeah, I will. I will read the books. Like <laughs> it is a major task. It's it's on your to do list, your life list, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Pravesh. Thank you. Okay, I think we're about wound down for today. Kitty girl, did you have any that you wanted to share today? if I could do that. You're kind of cutting out a little bit there. Try that again. Okay. Okay. All right Where then. Where can girl go? She's having a connection issue today so she's going to skip Aww. going. You've been listening to Shadows Pub host Pimp Your Post Thursday. Thank you for joining us on PYPT and join us next Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Until then, keep on creating and it's all about community and oh yeah. Bye Wilma. Bye Wilma.